hasn't waxed nostalgic about the good old days when life was simpler, more neighborly, civilized? Ted Koppel starts us off this morning with a visit to the real-life counterpart of the town most of us knew only on television. That tall, amiable sheriff and his little boy, Opie, heading to a fishing hole on the outskirts of Maybury, North Carolina, were actually strolling along a back lot in Culver City, California. Ron Howard, he's the actor who played Opie, is now one of Hollywood's top directors. Most of the other stars, Andy Griffith, Don Knotts, who played his deputy, Barney Fife, and the actors who played Aunt B and Floyd the Barber, they've all passed on. After all, it's been 53 years since the show was canceled. So it may come as something of a surprise to learn that Mayberry is doing just fine, even though its actual name is Mount Airy. And its only genuine link to the Andy Griffith show is that Andy was born and grew up here. Andy Griffith, God bless him. If he had not been born in this particular little town, we wouldn't be standing here having that conversation. Enjoy your tour today. Randy Collins is president and CEO of the Mount Airy Chamber of Commerce. And he's recalling when North Carolina's tobacco and textile industries had the stuffing knocked out of them. After the mills closed, I think a lot of the town fathers and the business owners got together and said, hey, you know, what about this Mayberry thing? Maybe we can do something with it. And businesses were born or reinvented. It's a little bizarre, isn't it? It went off the air. Right. More than 50 years ago. Yes, sir. It captured a reality that never was. True. Mayberry is fictitious. Most everyone knows that, except maybe some of the rabid fans of the show. They believe it's real. And, let it be said, the town isn't doing a whole lot to undermine the illusion. <laughs> Stop by at Wally's Filling Station, and you can get a ride around town in a vintage Ford Galaxy squad car. These days, there's a whole fleet of them carting tourists around town. <laughs> Once a month or so, Betty Lynn, who played Barney Fife's girlfriend, Thelma Lou, is brought from a nearby retirement home to the Andy Griffith Museum. I've been from Arkansas, so I've been waiting to see you for 30 years. <laughs> Crowds of appreciative fans line up for autographs. I can die now. <laughs> we are constantly looking at other ways that we can promote the community because we know the Mayberry generation won't be here forever. But now with streaming television, Andy will be forever with us, and we hope a younger generation will pick it up. As if on cue, the Foster family from Pomeroy, Ohio, showed up. Watch it four hours, yeah, Monday four hours. through Friday. Yeah. It's no exaggeration to say that this recreation verges for the Fosters on being a national monument. You watch the Andy Griffith show four hours a day? More than that. Uh, what do you mean more than that? It's on sometimes <laughs> early in the morning. Aren't you afraid that after a month or two of watching four hours or more a day, that you're gonna turn his little brain to mush? Oh, no. No. Not when it comes to good, wholesome shows. Tell me why you like it so much. Good, clean comedy. Yeah, fun. good, clean comedy. Has morals, values. Do you, you don't see that a lot today in TV. Down on Main Street, where tourists peek into Floyd's Barbershop or grab a bite at the snappy lunch. We drove from Louisiana for the famous pork chop sandwich. That is so good. You hear the same theme. Yeah, I'm missing out on this. Kind of messy, but it's delicious. I think the generations now long for that simplicity of the, the episodes of Andy being real with his son about stealing or doing the right thing. And as a godless society that we see today is longing for simple life. Back when neighbors were, were neighbors and they provided for everybody else. 
what do you see, Mr. Koppel? Let me flip it back on you. I know you're doing this, sure. but what do you see? What you're saying is true of certain people. If you were black in the 60s, things were not all that good for you. If you were a Vietnam vet coming back, spit on and things, hated. things were not all that good for you. Down in the valley, valley so low. What actually happened during the years the program first played? The world seems to have veered off, at least for the moment, the collision course toward global annihilation. From Dallas, Texas, the flash, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Allied casualties are high. 232 Americans killed. We the Negro citizen of Dallas County are marching today from Selma to Montgomery. Those events never intruded inside Maybury's imaginary town limits. Can you give me a ride home, Paul? Oh, I can't, son. Barney's got the squad car, and he's off on a very important mission. Maybury is where more than 30 million Americans a week went to escape reality, which is why it's strange to find so many people half a century later searching for what made America great in a copy of a town that never was. You folks gonna have to stand up off the curb so you won't get your toes run over. <laughs> and as Randy Collins of the Chamber of Commerce acknowledges, African Americans were all but invisible on the Andy Griffith Show. There were very few speaking parts. One. OK, Opie, take over quarterback position. OK, let's go. If you watch closely in the crowd scenes, I think Andy and others on the show pushed to make sure that there were people of color in the crowds. But you have to look closely. Maggie Rosser is in her 90s now. She and her younger brother and sister were all born here, left, and returned. I moved back here. 1973. So we wanted a sandwich and we went in. Here, in Mount Airy. In our main street. And they served us, but we had to go out and eat. They wouldn't let you sit. Right. So even in 1973. Yes. Or a little bit after. A little bit after. Yes. <laughs> Bobby Scales, also born and raised in Mount Airy, has a clear memory of race relations in the 60s. Blacks knew where they belonged and whites knew where you belonged to. <laughs> and everything was segregated. Black people didn't exist. Evelyn Scales Thompson is Bobby Scales' twin. In making those programs, uh, it was for basically the white population. Hands on the car. She believes she understands the ongoing popularity of the program. It's appealing to people who are not familiar with small towns. And what Andy has projected is a quiet, peaceful a town with everybody happy, and everybody's looking for peace. So Mayberry, Mount Airy, good place to live? It's a good place. If it, if it were not home, I would not be here. Unwrap that for me. <laughs> I mean, you know, your home is where you make it. Yes, but not where you were born in your memories and family. But if your memories are mostly memories of being treated as the lesser, why would you want to stay? Well, I, I wasn't treated as a lesser in my family. I have family history. Our property is there in memories of childhood is still very strong. I'm very satisfied at being retired in the place where I grew up. Somehow Mount Airy becomes more complex with each conversation. <laughs> I, I have, bet, you know. I bet, uh, yes yeah. indeed. Mount Airy is a place where fantasy and reality intersect. If I wave the political thermometer across the forehead of Mount Airy, right. do people here believe that, that uh, Joe Biden is the legitimate president? That's a good question. Our former president had a lot of support here. If you took a poll, that would probably not lean in our current president's favor. 
As for the visitors, for 20 bucks a pop, they get to ride on a trolley car tour of Mount Airy. Sometimes a fellow in a deputy's uniform, and he does look a little like Barney Fife, rides along. The Elvis impersonator was an unexplained bonus. Thank you. Thank you. All right. As was the entire crew from CBS Sunday Morning. Now, I, I know you came here to have a good time and not to talk politics, but let me just ask you, as a matter of curiosity, how many of you think we had a fair election? No way. I saw two hands go up, so is it fair to say the rest of you think that it was not a fair election? No, it wasn't. No, it was not. I don't think it was at all. Was it a fair election? By no means. Because? I think there was a lot of voter fraud. It's now been proven. There's been people that's voted that's been dead 50 years. I think it's more the mail-in ballots. You don't know how much of those that were duplicated, triplicated, the whole bit. Look how many dead people voted for Biden. One question. It's a serious question, and I know you all will take it seriously. Tell me what you think happened on January 6th at Congress. They showed truckloads of people that they were bringing in for this. It was all staged, and that's how that started. They even showed pictures of it on the news about these vehicles coming in with all these BLM people. Yes, sir, you were starting to say. Disgrace on our country. Whose fault was it? One writer did blame Donald Trump, but he was in a distinct moment. I think it was staged. We've been to a lot of the Trump of rallies. Hand. I don't understand why they're focusing so much on that one issue when there's so many cities that are being burned down every day by protesters that's supposed to be peaceful. But it's all but focused on holding on these two people. Murder, kill everybody yeah. there. Yeah. Hang um, them in jail. Put them in jail. We don't even watch news on TV. Anymore. We got away we from it. We don't feel like that we are being told the truth. No. Mm -hmm. And we find our truth in other ways, and I won't say what those other ways are, but I feel like we're not being told the truth because we're trying to be swayed in a direction that we know is not the right direction. I won't be offended. I've been a journalist all my life. When President Trump talked about the press being the enemy of the people. They are. They are. And I love yeah. President they Trump. Are. I love that they man. Are. I do. I just hope when this airs, it won't show Southerners as a bunch of dumb idiots like so many parts of the country do. We have a lot of love in our hearts. We love our country. We love our fellow man. And if the rest of the country felt like that, it would be a better place. Mr. Carlton, can I something? Sure. This conversation about politics and division is what people come here to get away from. <laughs> we don't care what color you are. No. We don't even care what your politics are. Yeah. We just want to be good neighbors and treat yes. everybody alike. And that's, that's why they're coming here. Yeah. Yeah. Not America not should be. That's what America should be. That's what America should be. And when the script was written in Hollywood, that's the way it was.